One of the things we have with free and open source software, we have a lot of really powerful programs that allow you to create charts, whether it be pie charts or line charts, or bar charts, scatter plots, and things like that, any kind of graphs, right? There's a ton of free and open source software out there that allows you to do this thing. Much of it is kind of complicated because it's designed for people that are uh, scientific in nature or computer programmers. A lot of it is designed for professionals as far as in the business world and things like that. And I'm none of those things. So a lot of that really complicated software I don't know much about. But if you want an easy way to create some basic charts, whether it be bar charts or pie charts or whatever, LibreOffice has this ability baked into it. And it's actually rather simple. Let me show you. So let me switch over to my desktop where I have opened up the LibreOffice Calc. Now this is the spreadsheet program within LibreOffice. And let's go ahead and create a spreadsheet. But first, let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit. That way you guys can actually see what I type. So I'm just going to go down here in one of these cells. And let's imagine I'm creating a chart for my Linux related YouTube channel. Maybe I want a chart demonstrating uh, Linux distro popularity. Maybe I'm doing a chart of the page hit rankings on distro watch. So, you know, let me go ahead and title this column distro. And this column will be how about a time period, 12 months. I'll go grab the 12 month rankings, page hit rankings for various Linux distros. And at the top is MX Linux. And let's say that their page hits are 2710. And then I will just keep going, you know, with Linux Mint and I'll give this a number and et cetera, et cetera. I'll do about 10 Linux distros in this list. And I've went ahead and filled out the rest of this table here. And now all I need to do is I need to highlight the section that I want as far as data points for a chart. So I'm going to click on the 10 distributions as well as their page hits. And then what I want to do is I want to go up here in the toolbar and this icon here, if I hover over it, it is insert chart. So let me go ahead and hit that. And you can see we get this new dialog box here where if I wanted to, I could do a column chart, which if I move this out to the side, you can see that's what it's going to do. It's essentially a bar chart or I could choose bar and we could do it in this position here. So it's the lines are horizontal rather than vertical lines. Or I could do a pie chart if I wanted to do a breakdown via a circular pie chart. We have various other types of charts. Some of this will only be appropriate depending on how many uh, data points you have and, and things like that. We could do an area chart. We could do a line chart, various different types of line charts. For example, if I click this one, we get kind of like a, a 3D effect kind of going on bubble charts and scatter plots and this one here, which I'm not familiar with what a net chart is, but it is a spider web looking thingy and there's several varieties of it. But again, for what I did with this, uh, basically this simple two columned layout here, really a column chart is really what I want. So let me go ahead and click finish on that. And then if I want to move this chart to a different location than where it appeared by default, let me click somewhere outside the chart. And you can see the chart is permanently placed in that position. Well, it's not permanently placed because if I click on it again, you can see now the cursor has changed and I can actually drag the entire chart around to wherever I want it. Maybe I want to put it over here, you know, a little bit further away from the table. And naturally you could export all of this to a, a PDF file. For example, if you wanted to use a, a PDF, for example, in a, a slideshow presentation or something like that. If I go to file here in the menu and go to print preview, I can actually see what this would look like if I had actually printed this out on a standard paper. Now, obviously it doesn't look right because we have gone past this dotted line. There's actually a dotted line. I don't know if you guys can see it behind the chart. It's because this is standard uh, portrait uh, dimensions for printing. So really, if I was doing this for a slideshow presentation, especially at a computer, I'd want it to be like a 1920 by 1080 kind of dimension, right? So what I'd probably want to do is I'd go to uh, format and let me go to page style and see, go to page. Yeah, instead of portrait here, I probably want to do landscape 
And let's see just doing a standard landscape setting. Does that move the border? Yeah, now you can see the chart probably will be okay, but I'll move it over a little bit move it to these cells here just to make sure it fits and now if I go back to file and print preview yeah and now it would fit in that landscape dimension now of course you can resize the chart you can theme the chart you can change the colors of various things uh, and a matter of fact the table we can change too for one thing this is a little small as far as the font let me just resize all of this and instead of 10 point font let me make it 14 point font i think that would work we need to make this cell a little bigger this cell a little bigger as well actually get quite a bit bigger and then uh, for the headings here let me sl select these two cells here let's make that bold we'll also make it italics yeah that would look all right and then what i want to do i want to select basically the entire table here because it doesn't have a border or anything around it and what i could do is i go over here to right here border style and i do the little arrow out to the side for the drop down and no that's not the one i want i want this one right here uh borders drop down and then you have various layouts here border styles predefined i want this one here where everything has a border all the cells have an inner and outer border line so now that we've done that yeah I think I like that. Let's go ahead and do a print preview on that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So let me close out of the print preview. If you want to resize a chart, you could click on it and then you could resize it to what fit whatever page layout that you need this thing to fit. And again, we mentioned styles. You can click on individual elements. Let me click out of the chart and then back into the chart, maybe on this number here. Yeah, you know, I can get in here and I can play around with fonts and fonts effect and, and, and all of that. I'm going to cancel that. Um, you can play around with the colors, especially if uh, you're creating a, a slideshow presentation, maybe instead of a white background, maybe you're using a black background. You can go in here and click on the various font elements. For example, if I click on the chart itself, I can go in here and we've got a different kind of toolbar here. For example, chart type, we could change the chart type. If I don't like this bar chart, I could change it to a pie chart or whatever. It basically gets back uh, this kind of dialogue here where I could change the chart type. We have the chart area icon here, and this is where you can play around with some of the uh, colors and border styles and things like that as well. If I double click on one of the bars itself, you can see it will immediately take me to this line properties page. If I go to area, you can see the active color is blue. But if I wanted to make these bars, for example, red, let's go ahead and click OK on that. And you can see now I've changed the bars to red. And it's very easy to, to do that to basically all the items on the chart. If I wanted to change column B right here, just double click on it. I can and you can see I can go to font and instead of liberation font maybe I want I don't know some wacky font maybe material icons it's probably not going to be a font that looks right and it's not so I'll do a control Z to actually undo that but that's how you would change the fonts or the uh, colors of the text now let's imagine that instead of this kind of table here where I'm doing distros and then their 12 month page hit rankings, maybe I want a four column uh, table where I do the 12 month page hits and the six month and maybe the three month page hits as well. So what I'll do, I'm just gonna copy all of this and I'm gonna go down to what would be the next page. You see we have the page break here with the dotted lines and let me do control V to paste. And I'm just gonna go ahead and create some new columns for uh, six months and three months and then I'll fill in the various page hits for this and I'll make sure to put the fonts to the right size and style and I'll also add the borders as well. All right and I went ahead and created this new table of information. Now this will be a little bit different because now we've got much more information to display so I'm going to select the information that we want to chart and once again I'll go up here and I'll do insert chart and if I do a columned chart, you can see the column chart now is actually going to include three different columns by default, three different colors, and you can see what they will correspond to. So column B, column C, column D, if you wanted to, you could actually change these to be 12 months, six months, three months. That way it's obvious, you know, what each bar is but uh, you can, again depending on how much information you have in a table that you're converting over to a chart you know some of these uh, are more appropriate chart types this 
here would be a very appropriate chart type as well, but something like a pie chart, completely the wrong kind of chart for this because it only displays uh, one column of information essentially. So the, the pie chart actually only is going to show us probably what is in the very first column, the 12 month column. It's going to completely ignore the six month and three month columns because it has absolutely no way to display that kind of information. And then the line charts, if I go to the line chart, you can actually get three different lines going. So a line chart would work for this as well. And I think I'll leave the line chart for that. So I'm just going to go ahead and click finish. Once again, though, we're running off the side of the page and I don't think I'm going to have enough room unless I resize this whole thing. Let's see if I can resize it. Would it still be readable if I make it that small? Yeah, I think that would be readable. Let me go ahead and do the print preview again see how that would look. So that's the first page. And then let me scroll down to the second page. Yeah, that chart's a little small. I could probably put it up under the table. So let me go ahead and close that and then drag this and maybe put it up under. Uh, no, I still, I'm not, I'm going to run out of room, unfortunately, on that unless I make the table smaller. So I, on this, I probably have to put the fonts back to a smaller size. Let's go with 12 point font. Now, Got a little bit more room for the chart. Just a little bit more though, but let's see if that would be a little more readable. That's a little more readable, but still kind of small, but I'm going to go with it for now. Now, most of the time when you're creating presentations, you're probably not going to do this in a spreadsheet program like LibreOffice Calc. You're probably going to do it in a presentation program like LibreOffice Impress. And the good thing is you can create these charts in LibreOffice Calc and you can actually copy them and import them directly into LibreOffice Impress for your presentations. Let me go ahead and switch over to a different workspace and let me launch LibreOffice Impress. And LibreOffice Impress comes up with a dialog box. Do I want one of these predefined uh, presentation styles? Uh, yeah, I'll go with this one here. Lights. That's got uh, the purplish, pinkish kind of background with some bokeh effects. I'm not actually going to create a slideshow. I'm just going to quickly show you how I can go back into LibreOffice Calc here and I can highlight this chart. I can do a control C to copy. If I go back to the presentation slideshow, I could pick first slide here, not the title slide, but slide number two, if I do a control V to paste, I can actually get that chart as I created it from the calc program into the impress program. So that is a really quick and simple way again to create bar charts, line charts, pie charts, LibreOffice. It is kind of a complicated program. There's a ton of stuff you can do in LibreOffice. I don't use LibreOffice that often. I really don't use Office Suites much really ever in my life because I've never had a job or anything that required me to dive deep into this stuff. For example, spreadsheet programs like LibreOffice Calc, I barely know how to use them. But some of this stuff is simple enough that even somebody like me, a complete noob when it comes to this kind of work, you know, I can make these simple charts when I need to. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe, James, Matt, Paul, Steve, Wes, Armor Dragon, Commander Angry, George Lee, Matthew, Methos, Nate, Erion, Paul, Peace, Archimedor, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astri, Tools, Devler, War Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick episode about making charts in LibreOffice would not have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.